Howdy, folks. How are you doing? Well, as for me, I, I've got the flu. It might be coronavirus. I mean, I hope it's not. Anyway, we're here for a book review. So a book review that we're going to do. So Huckleberry Finn. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Should you read it? If you want, um, let me speak about when I was reading this book, I was in comparison with something like Paolo Coelho. I recently read Veronica Decides to Die, and, uh, and there's a lot of, like, what I've, I was thinking about this for a while, I was saying, is it philosophy? And I don't really like the word philosophy, because it rings up ideas of, like, Aristotle and, like, the old st stoical people who David Mamet said by the way stoical just means people who sit on their porch so the porch guys whatever they're called just but it but it does philosophy bring up that kind of um mentality that it's above you or it's about the stars in the sky and it's not relevant for how you actually live your life in today's world um, so I kind of, and actually my brother gave me a philosophy book once, and I must confess that I didn't read a lot of it because the ideas in there were very abstract and not relevant, so I would say that I am not a fan of philosophy. However, I do like it when in a book you have these ideas about life which you can relate to, and, um, there's a great one in Huckleberry Finn about Providence um, and I'm just going to try and find it or oh, let me pause and uh, here it goes I went right along not fixing up any particular plan but just trusting to Providence to put the right words in my mouth when the time come for I'd noticed that Providence always did put the right words in my mouth if I left it alone as for me that was the best line in the novel just amazing because that is what happens when you just leave things alone actually Providence it makes you do the right thing, and it's the same thing that Bukowski said, like, don't try. So, when you just stop trying and let things take their flow, usually the right thing happens and gets you to the right place, and those are the type of ideas that I really like in books. And so, I was thinking that, actually, the whole novel is very... It's a great story. It's a lot of fun, and that's why I would recommend to read it. If you want to have a lot of fun read this book. It's very funny. I actually did laugh. Um, Mark Twain obviously was a humorist and this comes across in a book. There's a lot of things that the characters do that are funny and it does make you laugh. Um, it is written like a, you know, like a comedy movie would be written today. It's like, totally would never happen. It would totally never play out in reality, but as a story, it's very funny. And, uh, you know, it's on that line of believable, yet, yeah, okay, this would not happen, but I'll believe it for the sake of the story, and I'll enjoy myself and have a good time and laugh, so, uh, if that's what you want, um, then you're going to have a good read, but as for if you want, and I've called it this, I call it li little ideas and big ideas, so throughout the story, I think that the plot and the characters in the story, they're the little ideas. But what I love in books is the big ideas. I mean, I love both, but when you have the plot and the story and the characters, and then suddenly this like big idea, which you can go, oh yeah, I can take that and I can really use that quote, like this one, Providence. Providence will put the right words in your mouth when the time comes. It's like, I've felt that. And now I see it expressed, and I know that someone else felt that too, so now I feel that the idea that I had is, uh, I have evidence now that somebody else felt that way, so the idea, the way that I feel, feels more stable. It's like somebody is backing up my idea, 
And so that gives the idea or the feeling that I had about Providence more weight. And I can now feel more confident in my world view. And so, you know, that's a big part of why I like reading because it's about stabilizing your world view. And, and so that's what I realized. I really like, you know, these big ideas in books which help you stabilize your worldview and did I get that in Mark Twain I once and I've read you the quote um, so that's why I say should you read it if you've got time if you want some fun um, another reason to read it by the way is that a big part of the theme is slavery so obviously um, and I just googled this quickly but Mark Twain was born November 30th, 1835, and he died, so he lived all the way through to April 21, 1910. So, 1835, his birthday. When was slavery abolished in the States? The 13th Amendment, and obviously if you're American you might already know this, but I'm British, so I didn't know this, but slavery was abolished in the States in January 30th, 1865. So... That makes Twain 29 years old, huh, the same age as me, uh, when slavery was abolished. Which means that he did live almost 30 years through a society in which they had slaves. Which gives him, you know, exactly the right to create a novel and be authentic. Obviously it's a story, it's fiction, but all fiction is inevitably based on truth um, ab ab from what we've seen and heard and do and so even though it is fiction obviously it's going to give you some idea of what slavery was like and there was a line like um, he asked there was a steamboat and Huckleberry Finn lies and says on the steamboat, um, something exploded on the steamboat, and his answer is, well, has anybody hurt? He said, no, nobody was hurt, but a nigger was killed, and well, a nigger died, or something. He went, whoa, <laughs> wait a minute, so nobody was hurt, that means nobody was hurt, everyone was safe, but a nigger died, so, kind of gives you, or gave me exactly, oh, right, wow, you know, because I live in a society where, well, you know, everybody has the same value. You would hope. You would hope. Um, but still, kind of reading that made me understand how black people were actually treated back in 1835 or 1865. Not as people. And... Uh, yeah, so, I think if you're, that's obviously a big theme of the book, I mean, I think it's taught in American schools, and that would be why, because it does paint a picture of exactly society and race, racial views and how white people viewed black people and how slavery was and, um, you know, it's on a, this is, Mark Twain is uh, writing about a runaway nigger and, um, so, as a picture, a fictional picture, but still a picture of um, what life was like back in 1835, uh, it's going to be interesting to read. And, um, you know, the way, the way that people acted and were back then was definitely interesting to read about. Uh... Which is another thing, I mean, it, it, so that would depend on what type of big ideas you like, because that's a very, like, historical thing, whereas what I'm talking about is this abstract oh, philosophy, abstract ideas like providence, faith, courage, love, uh, peace, um, things like this. So, different types of ideas. Yeah, so... 
you're you're not gonna you're gonna learn a large part of history and you're gonna have fun along the way. So of course that's why it's gone down in 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 history as a classic because it does deserve it and it is a great book. The middle drags on a bit because these two characters, the king and the duke, are introduced. And uh, to be honest, I didn't like them, and I was waiting for them to leave. And then Huckleberry Finn like escapes from them. Well, I will not. I won't spoil it from you, but that goes on for just like way too long, in my opinion. And a large like middle bit of that book could be cut out because the start was fantastic and the ending was fantastic. But then, okay, I I wasn't into the two characters in the middle. And I just thought that went on for way too long, and I wanted it. I wanted to get to the end of the book. Um, so that was my kind of like criticism as an author, as a writer. I would criticize the middle of the book. Um, obviously, I feel bad doing that because it's Mark Twain. But as a writer, I have the authority to criticize other works, and that's what I would pick out. Was what I didn't like was the middle of that book. What else? Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's it. I mean, if you do want more um, abstract ideas about, um, I suppose, psychology, you're not going to get it, I don't think, in Mark Twain. But you are going to get an insight into history and you are going to have a lot of fun along the way, like I said. So if that's what you want, do give it a read. And uh, wish me a good recovery from whatever this illness is. Thank you. And I will see you in another video. Leave comments down below. Because, you know, just do that. I want to talk. I'm interested in... Let's let's start a conversation. Am I interested? If you have something relevant to say, yes. I'll be honest. If, if, if not, well, don't leave a comment. But if you've got a view, please leave it. Thanks.